What is going on everybody? Simply Tan here and today is that time of year again where my Lego sets have gotten dusty once again so that means that I have to go through and clean them that way they don't get too dusty and then it's like a point of no return. And well instead of just doing it I decided that this time I will record the process of how I do it that way I can share with you some of my tips and tricks on how to keep them clean and how to clean them once they do get dirty. So without further ado here are my 10 tips and tricks on how to keep your Lego sets clean and how to clean them if they do get dirty. One thing that I'd actually really like to let you know before we jump in here is the fact that I am a channel here on YouTube, which means that I do make other videos like this, so if you enjoyed this one, if I were you, I'd go and check out my other videos, because they all have to do with this unique 10-part method that I hope is appealing to you, and I hope you enjoy it. And there's always the fact that if you didn't know, if you can get me to a thousand subscribers, there are a couple prizes that you could earn. But you know, in the end, what you're really here for is the content, so let's jump right into that with number one, which is basically my biggest tip but it's also the most expensive tip, so I mean, basically the rest of these are sort of like, if you can't do this, then do the rest of this. And number one is the fact that if you're really not that interested in putting forth the effort of cleaning your sets every now and then, then you should probably consider getting some display cases. Display cases are a really nice and easy way of keeping all the dust off of your sets because, well, obviously they will cover the display case in it instead, so you just do a nice little sweep across every once in a while rather than going in depth and around all the pieces in your sets. Now obviously if you're really into like messing around and touching your sets and doing things like that with it, a display case probably wouldn't be the greatest idea, but if you're really just using your sets as a display piece in the first place, then a display case might be a good idea. However, even if you do like messing around with your sets, I would actually recommend a plastic bin, which is another form of display, where you sort of just put all of your smaller sets into these plastic bins, that way the dust stays off of them because it's not like they're really that useful in terms of display. And my third sort of display case option is a very temporary one. If you're planning on moving them into, you know, a more permanent display case or something like that, and you don't really feel like dusting it before you do so, then maybe just put a blanket over it for the time being. Because the blanket will do a pretty nice job of keeping all the dust off, and it won't cost very much money as long as, you know, you just have a few spare blankets lying around. But, you know, like I said, not everyone has the money for display cases, and some people just don't want display cases in the first place because they like to mess around with their sets and stuff. Which is completely understandable because, I mean, even I don't do that. I don't have display cases for anything. It's just not really something that interests me. So I, too, have to listen to my next nine tips for you guys. And so we'll start that off with number two, which is to keep the air around it as still as possible. And what I mean by this is you don't have to, like, tiptoe around your sets. But what I'm saying is, like, maybe, like, avoid keeping the fan off as often as possible because that's sort of, you know, the makes the dust move around in the room and it gets on your sets faster. Or you know if you have a room that isn't used that often it actually would be a nice idea to move your sets into there because then there will be less movement in the room so then there's less dust floating around. Basically just don't put them in a high traffic area where dust is swirling all over the place 24-7 constantly because you should be expecting to dust that set very often if you put it in a place like that. So for number three, I just thought that I'd show you a set as an example for this one because it is something that is specifically wrong with this one. Don't worry, I haven't had it set up like this for a while. I just did it just now to show you in this video, but there's something wrong with it that I'd like to show you and it's something that may not be as obvious until I point it out. And I'll give this really nice looking panoramic view to give you one more chance to guess exactly what it is that is wrong with this display. And well, if you haven't guessed it yet, the problem is right in front of you. Yes, I know, sadly, as much as I like displaying figures on my sets, it really does make it a lot harder to clean them, especially because it makes the figures really dirty, and that is something that I really don't like. Like, as much as I hate dirty LEGO sets, I hate dirty figures even more. So one thing that I really sadly recommend is that you take those figures off because it really does make it a lot harder to clean, especially, you know, considering the fact that the figures are such a big part of the set and it's sad to see them get so dirty and so dusty, and they're a lot harder to clean because they're not as, like, flat, swoopy surfaces to move across. So just take a bin like mine, a plastic one, whatever you have, and just go ahead and open it up and start sticking the figures in because that's just just the way it has to be and it's sad, but you know, it is worth it in the end in terms of keeping them clean and not having really nasty looking figures along with your nasty set, which is a lot easier to clean than the figures themselves. And my last tip in terms of preventing the dust itself and making your life easier and having to dust less often, and number four, I have a very simple tip, and that's just to keep things as far from the floor as possible. Your floor is one of the dirtiest places in your home, so as you can see I have a lot of just plastic and boxes on the bottom rather than all of my big nice sets, and I even have some of the little smaller junkier sets that I really don't care about as much, and then maybe just a few, but it's just because there's not very much room, but if you can, avoid putting as many sets on the ground as possible. 
So next up at number five, like I said earlier, I'm gonna start talking about ways to clean your sets once they do get dirty, and that all starts with one of my best friends when cleaning Lego sets, and that is a Swiffer. I don't have that much knowledge when it comes to the world of cleaning supplies and dusters, but as far as I know, the Swiffer is the best one out there in terms of really cleaning off those nice flat surfaces on your sets. One of my best examples of the usefulness of a Swiffer is my classic TV series Batcave because there are a lot of nice flat surfaces on it that is a really good demonstration on, on the effectiveness of a Swiffer. So for instance, take this helicopter here, I can just take the Swiffer and I can nicely wipe off the blades and go across. As you can see, the dust is gone, like it's not on the top here. I mean, obviously I still have to go around and do all these other pieces, but I just wanted to show you that it's, it's very effective. Or when it comes to the load of dust on the landing pad itself, you can easily just wipe the Swiffer across and it makes it look brand new. But I mean, it doesn't always work on things like rough surfaces and stuff like that, but when it comes to pretty decently flat surfaces on your Lego sets, the Swiffer is the best way to go because I, it just looks really nice in the end. Even on this Batmobile here, which I in no way consider to be a build with full of flat surfaces, it does a pretty nice job. Once again, you can just drag the Swiffer across, like across the front, and you can just see how much better it looks. Like, you can tell, right? Or going across the back, you can do the same thing on the little fins here, which you can really tell on, and then just some of the cracks if you really want to. But it does a really nice job, and when it comes to the flat surfaces on your sets and things like that, the Swiffer, once again, is definitely the way to go if you're really looking for a nice way to clean off the flat parts and really nice looking parts of your sets. And, well, I probably know what you're thinking now. If I can use a Swiffer to go across the nice smooth parts of my sets and make it look really nice there, what about the, like the harder to get to areas that are still pretty easy to see but impossible to get to with a Swiffer and they just look really nasty and dirty because I can never reach the dust there? And, well, that is where at number six, your second best friend comes in when cleaning Lego sets, and that is a microfiber cloth. I'm not exactly sure why, but for some reason, whenever I just rub this up against any of my sets, it does a really nice job of cleaning off the dust and it makes it look almost brand new. Like obviously my sets will never look brand new again because dust will still be there. There'll be little areas and stuff where I can't reach and things like that. But it does a really nice job, especially when combined with a Swiffer. All you have to do is take one of your sets, in my case the classic TV series Lego Batmobile, and then take your microfiber cloth and then rub it up against wherever, you know, the more nitty gritty parts that are harder to get for your Swiffer. And then it comes off almost like magic. Like the microfiber cloth does wonders. I have no idea why, it just really helps and does a really good job at cleaning the little small areas on your sets that you, would, you wouldn't otherwise expect to be able to get to. Now number seven is one of my tips of what to do once you're using your Swiffer and your microfiber cloth, you know, sort of like how to get to areas and things like that. And that is the fact that you can actually, if you want to, which I do, you can take off little pieces and you can Swiffer around or microfiber around and it's more of a flat surface so it makes it a lot easier to dust and then you can sort of dust those little pieces individually. And well, here we are back at my best example of how to dust and clean your sets, and that is my classic TV series Batcave. And this time we are gonna look at like the main house area of the Batcave, and I'm gonna show you that tip on how you can move the pieces up and it makes it a lot easier to clean the surface that is really dusty. So obviously this depends on the fact that you can see all this dust. I hope the camera is doing a good job at showing you how dusty this is and then how undusty it looks once I do this technique. I guess it's not really that much of a technique, it's just something you can do. So I mean, let's just go ahead and do it, right? I'm gonna pull off this desk here, and then I'm gonna pull off the globe. There we go. And then I'm gonna pull off the two trophies, and then look at that. Look at how much easier that looks to dust now that I've taken off all those little pieces, because now I can easily just slip her across the top, and now it looks so much better. And my tip here for you at number eight is the fact that you can actually uh, go and use a wet rag if there's something that is really, really, really hard to get because that's probably the best bet. Like a Swiffer and a microfiber cloth can only go so far. Now next up at number nine is sort of like a really like off the radar tip that I have for you. And that is something that you may run into when cleaning your sets. And that is damaged stickers. I mean, stickers are kind of an important thing to sets and they kind of bring them together and really enhance the look sometimes. Sometimes Lego relies on them too much, but that's besides the point. It's kind of important to have nice looking stickers on your sets because it can really make the set look very bad if your stickers just look gross and dirty and they don't look very good at all. And I mean, if you don't regularly dust them, it's a lot harder to use a wet rag to clean your stickers because they'll kind of just ruin the stickers. And if that happens, I have one simple recommendation for you. And that recommendation is not to go and buy official Lego stickers on eBay because they can be expensive. I would more recommend you go and buy like off-brand stickers that are supposed to, you know, look exactly the same because I don't know if there really is that big of a difference between Lego stickers and just normal stickers. 
I personally don't have any experience with this, but I don't see anything wrong with you going and buying off-brand stickers for a much cheaper price and saving you most likely a lot of money. It's not like you're buying off-brand pieces to replace broken pieces in your sets, you're just buying stickers and I'm not even sure, you know, how nice Lego stickers actually are. And finally, here at number 10, I have two little tiny bonus tips for you that are the most helpful, but I thought I'd just give you a few more ideas on how to keep your Lego sets looking as nice as possible, and that starts with making the surrounding area as nice as possible. So for bonus tip number one is the fact that you should probably also consider dusting off your shelves as you dust your Legos. Like, I mean, you're already pulling them off to dust them anyways, might as well dust the shelf around it. That way the whole, like, setup looks nice instead of just the set looking nice and a sea of dust around it. And the other thing that I have to say is if there is a spot that you really, really, really can't get to, like there's no way to reach it and you really want to reach it, maybe consider blowing. Like it won't hurt to blow, so just try and just see what happens because sometimes it does help and sometimes it is effective, but most of the time it isn't. Like don't just blow all your sets, don't just walk around and because that's not going to do anything. Use those other techniques that I showed you. But I mean, if there's something that you really want to like dust that's hard to reach with the two tools that I showed you, then blow. Anyways, that is it for today. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you watching this video and giving me your time, and I hope you found this video helpful and informative in a way that really makes you want to come back and see another one that I make. If you enjoyed this video, a like would be greatly appreciated, and a comment would be even more appreciated so I can know exactly what you liked about it and what I should do next time. Or if you're not into that sort of thing, let me know what my favorite tip was that I shared with you. And as always, if you really, really, really enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing because I make videos like this all the time. So if you like this one, you'll like all of them. And I mean, don't forget about those prizes if you can get me to a thousand subscribers. But with all that being said, I really, really, really hope to see you in the next one.